The Senate Judiciary Committee voted 17 to 2 today in favor of moving Eric Holder's nomination for Attorney General to the full U.S. Senate. That vote may come tomorrow. So, congratulations, America. We are about to get our first African American Attorney General. Yay. On the occasion of the start of Mr. Holder's expected tenure, New York Senator Chuck Schumer said, quote, the rancid political considerations of the Department of Justice will be history. History, yes. But if it really is rancid and you really want to get rid of that stink, this may require some cleaning up. And so it is time for the Rachel Maddow Show special series on President Obama's post-Bush mission. Scrub, rinse, repeat, because this is going to take a while. Probably the big exclamation point in Mr. Holder's confirmation hearings came when Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin asked about crimes committed, misconduct committed by Bush administration officials. As with so many of the mistakes and abuses of the last administration, it, I don't think it's just enough to end the misconduct. What will you do to make sure that justice is truly served and that those who engaged in wrongdoing don't, in effect, have the last laugh? Well, one of the things I'm going to have to do, I think, as Attorney General, in short order, is to make, uh, basically, do a damage assessment and understand, in a way that I do not now, um, how has the institution been harmed by the activities that have, were uncovered by these Inspector General reports. Whether officials from the Bush administration will be prosecuted for their actions is turning out to be among the most pressing issues for the new Obama administration. The hottest topic, of course, is possible war crimes stemming from Bush policies on imprisonment and torture. There are also crucial misconduct questions about warrantless wiretapping and the politicization of the Justice Department. On that last issue, House Judiciary Chair John Conyers has subpoenaed Karl Rove to testify on Monday about his role in the firing of U.S. attorneys. Attorneys. Rove's lawyer has suggested that Mr. Rove might actually show up this time. That would be novel. But while it is clear that the Obama administration will be different from its predecessor on a lot of national security, privacy, politicization, and secrecy issues, the question is, will it be different enough? The ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, is testing the theory of change in the White House in classic ACLU style. They filed a big, fat Freedom of Information Act request sent to the Obama administration today. They're seeking a bunch of Bush administration documents and legal memos on interrogation, detention, and warrantless wiretapping. So, new administration, new policies, that's great. But we still don't know if this new team will investigate the Bush administration. If officials broke the law, will they pay a price or will they get away with it? Joining us now is Democratic Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin. He's chairman of the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution. Senator Feingold, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for inviting me. There was a report in the Washington Times today, um, an interview with Senator Kit Bond of Missouri, who's not on the Judiciary Committee, but he said that he plans to vote for Mr. Holder's confirmation in the full Senate because Eric Holder assured him privately that as Attorney General, he would not pursue possible prosecutions of any Bush officials, specifically on the issue of interrogations and torture. Uh, if, if that's true, if he did tell that to Senator Bond, would you see that as being at odds with what he said in his confirmation hearing? Yeah, I heard this uh, allegation from Senator Bond, and we checked with uh, uh, Mr. Holder's people and the president's people, and they indicated that that's not the case, that he certainly did not give an assurance for no prosecutions. Mr. Holder knows very well that if there's clear evidence somebody did something inappropriate, that that still has to be on the table. So I don't think that he got that assurance, and I don't think Senator Bond should rely on such an assurance. Very clear. Thank you. Um, on, uh, on the issue of, of prosecutions and looking back, if it does turn out that um, the Justice Department under Mr. Holder does not move forward with investigations. Do you think that there is a role for the Senate to take up these sorts of investigations, uh, possibly you know, subpoenaing, possibly looking at a possible criminal referral? I'd say regardless of what the administration comes up with, Congress has an independent responsibility. The Judiciary Committee and the Intelligence Committee, both of which I sit on, to look at the past practices, look at things people did, what went wrong what actually happened and potentially if there are wrongdoers that need to be pursued to make that clear to the proper authorities. I think all of that has to be on the table. The notion that somehow you just wipe the slate clean and not even consider the record of what happened I think is wrong. Our first priority is changing our international uh, program and what we're doing around the world and, and fixing the terrible difficulties we have in this country. Those are the top priorities, but we should not ignore the need to deal with accountability and, and, and correcting the very serious attack on the rule of law that characterized the Bush administration. 
You have long fought against secrecy in the Bush administration. It's another thing that you asked Mr. Holder about during his confirmation hearings, the, the, the freeing of documents long held back by the Bush administration. Do you think that pressure from congressional leaders and from outside groups like the ACLU who filed their big uh, FOIA request today, do you think that sort of external pressure will be needed to get released these materials relating to interrogation practices and wiretapping and politicization of the Justice Department? Well, I think external actors, uh, ACLU, others, people in Congress should keep the heat on, but one of the reasons I felt really good about voting for Eric Holder is that I think he has a great attitude about uh, keep keeping things open. I asked him some very specific questions when we met in my office and before the committee about whether he'd reveal information, critical information about FBI guidelines or whatever the issue might be. And every answer I got suggested he's a person who understands that the material should be released unless there's an incredibly important reason not to inform the Congress and the public. So I'm, I have a good feeling about that, but I think uh, keeping the heat on is always a good idea. I want to turn to the constitutional amendment that you are proposing uh, for the way that states fill Senate vacancies. Obviously, this has become a bit of a circus um, with Governor Blagojevich in Illinois, who I, I, I interviewed yesterday, uh, and some of the other Senate vacancies as well have been handled in a circus-like atmosphere. Uh, could you explain what exactly you're proposing in this constitutional amendment? Yeah, you get a circus-like atmosphere uh, many times when you, instead of having the people decide, you have one person, a governor, make a decision that the people of an entire state should make. Now, of course, what we as a nation came to this conclusion with regard to house races at the origin of our nation. We have only special elections for house races under the Constitution. Came to the same conclusion in 1913 about Senate races under the leadership of people like Bob LaFollette of Wisconsin who said, let's have direct election of senators instead of the monkey business that was going on in state legislatures. So we passed the 17th Amendment, which required special elections, except for in cases of a vacancy like this. And that, to me, is just a loophole. And now we're seeing the problem with the loophole there are states in which the governor doesn't appoint um, a, a, right. somebody to the vacancy. Why do this with a constitutional amendment instead of pushing other states to follow Wisconsin's lead here? Well, I don't think there should be any exceptions to this. To me, this has to do with voting rights. To me, this has to do with the fundamental law of the land, that everybody should have a right to have their vote counted when it comes to something as sacred as whether or not you get to, to decide to, who's going to be your United States senator. So we don't just push the states when it comes to voting rights. We don't just push the states when it comes to civil rights. We say, look, this is the way it has to be in a country that's based on democracy. It is not a states' rights issue when it comes to the question of whether one person in a state can override the will of all of the people of a state. It's a voting rights issue to me. Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin, Chairman of the Subcommittee on the Constitution on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Thank you so much for coming. You bet, Rachel. Today, sir. Nice to see you. President